Okay, this is hunting for purple streetlights in Kansas City, maybe video 350, I think, or so. And now I am going to, I ended the other video here, and I had to go to the restroom, and now we're gonna go. This is gonna be a shorter video than the other one, because I'm not gonna do as much driving, because I'm closer to home than I was before. Um, the other one's about half an hour long, um, in this one, I want to go to an area where I think they have new purple streetlights, but I have not filmed on this camera. This camera is especially sensitive to lights that are um, in the early phase even of becoming like full-blown purple lights. So I have not seen it on this camera. I've only just seen it with my eyes. But to the left here, so we're basically in a topographic trough. In fact, right there, that's a bridge that goes over um, a creek. I'm trying to remember why. I think it's Indian Creek, but I but don't quote me on that on that right now. I don't think it's actually maybe it's not Indian Creek. It's a creek at least. Um, that merges up with the little blue little blue river eventually. Anyway, um, I think it's connected also to the same one as Hart um, Hart Grove Creek over by those two purple streetlights by Bannister and US 71 there. All right, I'm going to take a right. I don't remember if it's this one. Okay. I see some lights that are a little bit wider than the other ones here, but I don't know if those are actually defective lights now. Let's see. So I can't say for sure, but they actually don't look as purple as they looked when I was driving past it. Or I'm sorry, when I was riding in the bus past this area. Okay, so maybe they're not. Um, but they're not just here. I think they're in the next one too. Maybe the next ones are actually more purple than this. So let's go look just in case I'm missing any. Okay, I see one that kind of looks like an early defective light. That's gonna eventually be purple. Like this one right here, it looks kind of like a, and I can't really show you the right to the right. It's like the, like it was before. Well, they're not, we're just like some of them are kind of whiter. This one though, like, looks a lot like, oh, okay. I guess we can't go in there. That one looks like an early one. Some of those look like early ones. I don't know what this looks like on the camera. I have not seen it, but it's possible that those are like an example of the homogenous ones like we see over by, um, actually by Warnall here, and Bannister. So to the left eventually, if you were to take a left, I suppose we can go and drive and look at those real quick since we're already over here. And then there are the other ones that are across the street from those that are actually purple. They're turning purple, but they also slowly change. So I'm just, I'm noticing more lights now that are slowly changing, but really the ones that I'm talking about that are across the street are, I'm pretty sure there's a purple. We zoomed in on the LEDs and there is homogenous, I'm sorry, heterogeneous. They have a heterogeneous nature, but they're more homogenous than the other lights where you can just see blue lights and white lights. So they're kind of like an intermediate between them. The um, purple street lights that we usually see and these other newer homogenous ones with smaller LEDs that are oftentimes like on a little cylinder of LEDs that are inside of like an encasement. So we're at Bannister right now on Warnall. <clears throat> and to the left, like we have these other yellow lights here. I don't see any of these changing. This, there's no indication of these ones. But if we go further on that same side of the road, um, where that security guy told me I had to leave, um, they, those are purple and they're across the street from the other ones that are homogenous in nature. Where I couldn't really find. There's some look like they might be slightly purpler than the other ones, but it's not the same as like what I'm talking about with the other purple street lights where they just, they switch to, to blue or purple eventually. And they start to turn purple, but then they switch like all the way. It's not like a, doesn't seem like a very steady Kind of change where they all kind of change a little bit but some just change it a little bit more than others it's not really like that with the other ones it's pretty easy to prove that they're just 
perspective, these are harder to prove. Both groups, really, but on the left side, first I'm going to do a U-turn so we can actually also see the progress of these other ones to the right, and then we'll come back around and we'll look at the other ones on the left side. So on the right side, those are, I'm, I'm guessing you can definitely see that they're probably purpler than most lights, that they would be purple lights. And I don't know if we, I'm pretty sure we can't get out of my car, but I might be able to actually just turn around in here at least. can't okay I guess I gotta go all the way around but that's what that looks like that's what that looks like but we can't stay here so easier okay. this or do a u-turn I guess so just And then, so now across from that, so by the way, though, if you look at this, so it's going downhill from right to left, right? And there's a trough right there, right? It even goes down deeper where that parking ramp is. So the trough kind of is turning and going, it's actually going really northeast, southeast to north, I'm sorry, southwest to northeast, kind of. There. I'm actually not sure about this. Okay. See how those look like really blue on camera? Visually, they just kind of look like early defective lights. But, like I explained, it's really hard to prove that with these things. But you can see that they're not the same level of purple or blue. And so, I mean, I've... I also see other examples, even at work recently, where um, some LEDs are turning purple before others, but like in like a, inside of like a thing where we store stuff. So it's like, yeah. And and I don't know how heterogeneous those are, but they they seem kind of homogenous. Let me just put it that way. But some are turning kind of purple before the other ones. And so I don't know. It's like a really, it's a blurry line, I guess. So these are actually harder to prove, I guess, is my point. Just like some of the other ones I've seen recently. Nonetheless, I don't think that they're haphazardly placed. At least the other ones, I don't think they are. And this still is set up with a topographic trough so and it's across the street from those other ones I don't think that's an accident that's not a coincidence right no urbanized to the left kind of but I guess on this way so that's worn all by the way
don't forget about all these other lights here, guys. Those lights make up a minority. The purple lights are definitely a minority, aren't they? Like, you can see videos of me driving in this area over a year ago. More than a year ago, guys. And nothing has changed with these, at least. I guess we're not at two years yet, but I, I've i kept driving routes, and those other ones are not changing, okay? It's like, if it was a random thing, there would be more of them changing, and it's not random, guys. So, going through enough videos, at least from my experience, knowing what I know from actually look, making the observations, they, those other lights are definitely a different group of lights than these other ones. Like, when, I'm sorry. Now it sounds like I'm being confusing because of what I said about the categories of lights. The lights that turn purple are not in the majority. They're definitely the minority. So much so that to see the ones at main intersections turn purple, especially those ones, which, you know, does happen, I think, more frequently than not, more frequently than would be expected at random because of how, my, how much of a minority they are, um, I mean, that already represents a problem for non-intent, in my opinion. Um, I don't think, I think to say my opinion is really weak. And I think most people see that they arise like at the beginning of ramps, at the end of ramps, or on ramps a lot of times on interstates. At main junctions, for example. So I don't think that there's really even a, a contention in most people's minds that they're on purpose even. And yet they can continue to have that narrative for us and say that they're not on purpose. If we, if we let them do that and don't say anything back and don't try to really say, well, no, I don't think that they're accidental and because of where they're located, which I don't see a lot of. A lot of people don't talk about locations. They'll just, they kind of hint at it and say something about maybe tracking people. But I don't see a lot of the comments that say, hey, they're, they're at this intersection, that intersection, and if they're on purpose, I think Americans that could really support a... A, a country that can continue to be free, continue to be prosperous and free, would be the kinds of people who can challenge things that are not true. They can say, no, that's wrong. But I see attempts to prevent that. In my own experience, even. I can't even tell people that this is my name and I think this in the comments on YouTube. It will delete my comment. If I put my name in there, um, I can't put specific information in there, so nobody could know who I am. If my if my username is different to other people and it is to me, it's not even my name in my username. There's no way for me to get other people to see my stuff unless they go and they look at my videos. And for all I know, they I don't know what they see if they click on me, if I comment in there, like on a newscast. It shouldn't be like that. There shouldn't be all these hindrances to freedom of speech. I've watched my comments deleted. I've filmed them. I've even watched views go away on YouTube. I've seen it happen before. I even took a snapshot before and after. Um, and I even looked at the properties on my computer to go back just to make sure there, there's no chance of... And I took snapshots of that, too. And it shows that I, I even saved the, the snapshot before the other snapshot. And that the view is one less than the other one. So I've already seen this happen. And it couldn't just be me seeing something that didn't happen though, either. Because I went back and I did that. I even have the snapshot of the two different things. So there's no, there's no doubt in my mind that they're doing things that they shouldn't be allowed to do already. What that does, if people keep seeing that kind of stuff, it starts to demoralize them. They start to really think, well, there's no chance of having any influence on our government at all and voting. It doesn't matter. Um, people are just going to do what they want to do if they already have control. So it's... It's a mute point to try to, to stop corruption, right? That's not... So what they're doing with censorship to me is they're just teaching people that they don't matter and that there's no way to really stand against misinformation. And they'll call it misinformation. They don't... It, start, it makes people not care anymore. That's part of the process of demoralizing people so that they're no good to, um, to resisting corruption and stopping... Uh, what's eventually detrimental to lots of people, possibly people all over the place and all over the globe. They learn a lot of people learn it at their jobs too. Like they they're told something, but it's kind of like code almost. Like for well, don't do that. Logically, 
when they say certain things together so that they they hear what they're supposed to do they hear it literally but they they know that it doesn't mean literally they're not really logically trying to tell you that that's what they want they get used to hearing that and so even when there is corruption or something that really would matter and they could hear they can see that there's a difference between what they're saying and what they really mean they're used to like well you know i don't want to lose my job you know they're used to the other kind of operant conditioning they're used to making more money and getting more being benefited by ignoring it or and playing along so much that they might think well maybe the government has to do that sometimes and they don't care right so how are those people going to be any good at resisting like a corrupt a truly corrupt and dangerous government how are, that's dangerous to the populace how, how can they ever do anything to stop evil if you really think about what it is eventually because of the biases and the forces of people's even just greed and doing what works for them eventually the public loses right eventually the country loses from within i want you to really think about that if you've watched this video think about how censorship is not a good thing and what we need to do to to stop it like if Donald Trump means what he says, I want to see if he really means what he says. Is he going to stop censorship? I mean, I think he said he did something back in 2020, uh, like because of Antifa and stuff like that. And also, I think limiting speech back then. Let's see what happens uh, if if he be, even begins to become president. Um, if we don't have a complete world war or something like that before we, you know, the the quote. <laughs> peaceful transfer of power that they're talking about what do they mean when they see peaceful were they meaning that or were they trying to be funny about it like well let's see what happens i guess with europe russia and us um and whether we can work things out and what they try to do to donald trump before he becomes president and whether donald trump really means what he says all right i'm gonna stop this video